Mr. Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for moving quickly to hold this necessary hearing during a time of significant pain for our nation. And I want to recognize and thank Congresswoman Bass for her leadership to heal that pain. The Justice and Policing Act is an essential first step. Mr. Floyd, I offer my deepest condolences to you and your family. I can't imagine how difficult the last two weeks have been, and it is courageous that you are here today. Just yesterday, you laid your brother to rest. But his murder is a tragic reminder that we cannot rest. We have work to do so that George Floyd and Eric Garner, Philando Castile, Walter Scott, Antonio Arce, and too many others will not have died in vain and that their lives spur us to action. It's been more than 400 years since enslaved Africans were first brought to America's shores shackled and sold. We are in the midst of a reckoning and facing a very difficult truth that since that moment, there's not been a single day in which the maxim that our founders knew to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, has been fully recognized by our country for black Americans. Not a single day in which equal justice under the law has been fully experienced by black Americans. There is no greater tragedy in our history. And our generation has a choice. We can sustain America's original sin, or we can redeem her and be repairers of the breach. I recognize that the ability to end racism in our country is beyond the reach of this committee. We don't have the power to change every person's heart and mind. But what we can do is address structural racism and enact tangible measures of transparency and accountability in policing that can help make everyone safe. This is a charge that every level of government must take up, from those of us in Congress to everyone who serves on a city council. During my time as the mayor of my hometown, we started a community policing trust initiative, which earned the recognition from the Obama administration's Department of Justice, we enhanced de-escalation training for our officers. We rewrote the guidelines for interacting with our immigrant community. We started putting body-worn cameras on officers on patrol. And then when we saw the positive results, we budgeted for every officer on the beat to wear a camera. But I'll be the first to tell you, there is more work to do in every state, in every city, in every community in America. So I wanna ask our distinguished panel specifically about body-worn cameras. In 2014, research by Arizona State University found that officers wearing body cameras were more aware of their actions and sensitive to the scrutiny of the footage by their superiors. And I believe that every police officer on patrol in America ought to be wearing a body-worn camera. Professor Butler, do you believe that body-worn cameras help make members of the public and the police officers safer? Absolutely, absolutely. without body-worn cameras, there would be four killer cops who remained on the police force of Minneapolis. President Davis, how can body-worn cameras improve training for police officers? Uh, thank you for the question. In addition to capturing what happens, it allows the police department to go back and look at the everyday encounter, car stops, traffic stops, uh, pedestrian stops, and evaluate the kind of conduct. There's a good study out of Oakland, what Stanford did, to show that how officers engage men and women of color is completely different than how they were engaging non-minorities. So there's a lot to be learned just by watching the day-to-day -day activities uh, in addition to capturing the, uh, the critical incidents that we're talking about. Thank you. Ms. Eiffel, one of the main challenges with body-worn cameras is that they can be expensive to implement, not just the camera itself, but capturing all the information that the cameras provide. In your view, are they a wise and worthwhile investment for law enforcement agencies? I think body-worn cameras are vitally important, and I would caution that it is necessary to do more than just impose body-worn cameras. And that means there does need to be attention to the laws that govern who gets to look at that film in jurisdictions where law enforcement officers get to look at the film before they have to answer questions, then the body-worn camera film is just another tool 
that assist law enforcement officers in the community. I think you also have to pay attention to uh, jurisdictions that are embedding facial recognition technology in their body-worn cameras. This presents a very serious privacy concern for communities and particularly African-American communities. So they're important. They're not the be-all and end-all because we've seen film. We saw film with Eric Garner. We saw film with Walter Scott, who, uh, the, the officer who killed Walter Scott, who was originally acquitted uh, or the jury was hung. Uh, we know that film is not the be-all and end-all, but it is vital for all of the reasons that have been suggested. And I do want to flag, however, those cautions about what happens with that film is also a question that I would encourage you all to think about answering on the front end. Thank you so much. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. A great senator. Hi, Chuck. He used to love me when I was a Democrat, you know. 